A lot of people ask me where do I have to install my VST plugins. Now, first of all, there are two VST formats. We got VST2 and VST3. VST2 can install everywhere and this can be a big problem. And VST3 has got a fixed pass. So first, let's have a look at VST3. I go to Windows C. Now the program files, common. And here we got the VST3 folder. Here are all my VST3 plugins. And you can see this one is called VST3 off. I've tried the Oberhausen and uh, didn't buy it. So I put it to this folder. Now let's talk about VST2. When you install a plugin, native instruments or Sooth or what else, a lot of programs create their own folder. And when you don't know where this folder is, you, you don't know where, where is it and you got to, to say Cubase where all these folders are. So I show you, I go to studio with the plugin manager. And beside here, we got this little button. And here we got the VST2 plugin path settings. You can see we got a lot of paths. And when a plugin created a new path, go to this plus and go to the path or the folder and edit. Or you can remove it here. But this is very time consuming. So to avoid this, I go to here to C and I created this VST folder direct at drive C. This folder is called 32. It means 32 bit and 32 of 64. So 64 bit and 64 off. So um, now Cubase and Noando don't support 32 bit plugins, so I won't use them anymore and I don't miss anything. So let's talk about this folder. Why this two folder 64 and 64 off? Sometimes you add a plugin into your production or a few plugins, and suddenly your project won't um, start. So you want to, to load in your project. And it doesn't open and you don't not why yes you can start cubase and no endo in a safety mode uh, or a mode where no external plugins are included but i do this i take some of these plugins or here and put them to the off folder and then they are not loaded into cubase and then I can check which of the plugins I've used creates uh, the problems. Okay, so this is the folder 64 and 64 of. Next, we got this folder. Let's call it English. Let's call it to JBridge and JBridge. So uh, sometimes you got 32 bit plugins and you want to use them for this you can use the tool jbridge i guess it costs between 15 and 25 dollar and for this i created uh, this one to jbridge and here i just had one plugin i had in 32 bit it's been ultiverb but now i'm working with ultiverb 7 this has 64 bit but i wanted to send this one to jbridge and then i have this folder jbridge so this is uh, the result coming from jbridge yes and these are my most important folders and now when you install something let's say i want to install sooth I go to accept, yes, 
Yes. Now we got AX. I don't use it in Cubase, but I'm working in Pro Tools sometimes, so I install this too. VST2, there's nothing done with T, but it means VST2, 32. I don't need it. First uh, VST, uh, 64. Now let's do it for demonstration. VST3, 32 bit. No, VST3, 64 bit. Yes. Okay, so here is the folder for VST3. Never change this. And now here's the folder for my VST2 plugin. And this is in the right folder. When you don't see the right folder, go to Browse and select the right folder. Okay. And I prefer VST3. Why do I prefer VST3? We see three plugins just need CPU when there is an audio signal coming to the VST. And you got to activate it. Now I go to Edit, Preferences. Now I go to VST, Plugins. And here you see Suspend VST3 plugins processing when no audio signals are received. This has been deactivated. Let's activate it. Apply and now let's have a look, for example, Sooth. And you can see this three bars here. It's, it's very small. And this means it's VST3. This means it's VST2 64 bit. This is VST3. And now when I use this plugin, it just needs CPU power. When I go to this part, an audio signal has been sent to the plugin. When I'm at another part where nothing happens, this plugin doesn't need any CPU. So, when you like this video, please give me a thumb up. And when you have another question or a suggestion, I would love to read every comment. So, see you the next time.